the case has certainly garnered a fair share of conspiracy theories about what actually happened that night. As part of your investigation, are you able to shed any light as to why Paul Pelosi didn't run out of the house towards police officers when he was able to actually open the door for them when they arrived? All right, guys. So once again, we got to talk about the Paul Pelosi story. And the reason why I am covering this, despite the fact that the mainstream liberal media wants us to forget about it, is because I am not going to forget about the fact that the mainstream liberal media want us to believe that this pothead hippie pro LGBTQ black lives matter illegal immigrant living in Berkeley, California. They want us to believe that this guy was a MAGA supporter, right? He's a Trump guy, right? That, that's what they told us. And now they've kind of moved on from the story, which is surprising because they said that this was like January 6th. This is an extension of January 6th because allegedly before he beat Paul Pelosi with a hammer, uh, he was yelling, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? They haven't stopped talking about January 6th, so I don't know why they've stopped talking about this story. Well, we all know the reason why they've stopped talking about the story is because the mainstream liberal media narrative on this story is a lie. And because the midterms are done, this story is no longer useful. It does not serve the interest of the establishment to continue to push this story because, again, the mainstream liberal media narrative was a lie. And no, I'm not saying that it is a lie that Paul Pelosi got beat with a hammer. He probably definitely did. And I really do feel bad for the guy, especially considering how he's 80 some years old. And again, he, he got beaten in the head with a hammer. I hope he makes a speedy recovery. But the circumstances surrounding the relationship between Paul Pelosi and this guy should be questioned. Because again, they told us this guy was a Trump supporter. He was a MAGA supporter. Okay, this is what you're saying. I'm not going to let you sweep it under the rug. Okay, we're going to follow this into the end because it's clear what's happening here. What's happening here is that they're trying not to talk about this anymore because if they continue to talk about it, people are going to realize that what they was telling us was not true that this was a story that was designed to sway the outcome of the midterms desperate definitely didn't work i don't think anybody voted based off of this but a cover-up is going on here guys as you remember that nbc at the national level they had a report nbc today in which a, a reporter uh gave us what seemed to be conflicting details about what happened the moment that police arrived at the door of paul pelosi's residence in the interactions between the police, Paul Pelosi, and David Papate. NBC, the reporter, uh, said that, look, Paul Pelosi opened the door, he greeted the officers, and he did not appear to be in any, any danger. He did not indicate that he was in any danger. There was no emergency. In fact, Paul Pelosi walked back towards the attacker. You know, the guy that allegedly broke into his house screaming, where's Nancy? and wanted to break his wife's kneecaps. Yeah, he went back towards that guy. He did not run out the door to safety like a normal person. Who knows? Maybe Paul Pelosi was hammered before he got hammered. But I'm just saying, uh, obviously, that report raises a whole lot of questions about, again, the mainstream liberal media narrative that we're getting here. And again, the relationship between Paul Pelosi and his attacker. And because of that, NBC retracted a report and then suspended the reporter for reporting on it however we now have evidence that nbc is again engaged in a cover-up here as a local nbc affiliate news station ran the paul pelosi story last friday just a few days ago and confirmed the details of the prior report from the national nbc affiliate in regards to the details of what happened between Paul Pelosi and the police when the police arrived. And this report, mysteriously, probably because it came out after the midterms, has not been retracted yet. Take a look. All right, new information tonight on a story that we've been tracking, the attack on Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Our investigative team looked into why state and federal prosecutors each describe one specific detail of the police response differently. Senior investigative reporter Bagad Shaban has been checking with his sources to try and clear it up. He joins us now, and you've got some answers, Bagad. Well, just this all has to do with the moments, seconds, really, just before Paul Pelosi was struck in the head with a hammer inside his San Francisco home. Now, there continues to be con contradicting accounts of a relatively simple question. Who opened the door that night when San Francisco police arrived to the Pelosi house? 
Now, the Department of Justice says the two officers opened the door. That's according to a federal indictment filed earlier this week. But the San Francisco District Attorney's Office, in another court document that was filed earlier this month, said Mr. Pelosi opened the door with his left hand. So the question is, what really happened? According to a source familiar with the investigation who personally watched the police body camera footage from that night, officers knocked on the door of the Pelosi home, then backed away. And the video clearly shows Paul Pelosi opened the door with his left hand just like what was noted in the documents filed by the DA's office. Now, also as written in the DA docs, the source tells us the body cam video shows officers having a brief conversation with Pelosi and David DePap. That's the man accused of breaking into the Pelosi home before DePap starts beating Pelosi with a hammer. We reached out to the Department of Justice for an explanation on its differing account of this seemingly innocuous issue of who opened the door, but so far we have not heard back. However, I did get to ask San Francisco DA Brooke Jenkins directly about another issue many people are wondering about earlier this week, based on her office's account of Paul Pelosi opening the door. The case has certainly garnered a fair share of conspiracy theories about what actually happened that night. As part of your investigation, are you able to shed any light as to why Paul Pelosi didn't run out of the house towards police officers when he was able to actually open the door for them when they arrived. What I'm not able to do is to speculate or try to place my opinions on why someone acted the way they did in any case. Um, all we have is what happened. Everybody reacts to situations differently and he will one day need to explain right to potentially a jury why he did what he did um, and what thought process was going on in his mind. But certainly we know that all victims of crime respond very differently in the, under the stress of the situation and I don't think it's fair for us to place what we believe, um, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. All right, Big Ed, I got to ask you this because, I mean, in the end, does it really even matter whether he opened the door or the guy opened the door or the police opened the door? I mean, how does that change the scenario if you move away just conspiracy theories? Yeah, I mean, the reality is right now, Jess, we have no reason to believe that it matters at all. And that's why our source who has seen the police body cam video can't understand why federal investigators wrote that officers opened the door because they say the video shows officers didn't. But when two police agencies give slightly different accounts of what happened in this kind of high profile case like this one, it just feeds into conspiracy theories. And that's what we're seeing right now on social media. People inventing crazy stories based on something as simple as who actually opened the door. Yes. And in a situation, I mean, Brooke Jenkins said that there in a situation like that, when so many things are happening, it is chaotic for the victim. So let's put all that aside. Thank you. Thank you, Big Ad. Yeah, so it's very easy to explain why it's important, okay? To anybody with a functioning brain, apparently this reporter doesn't have one. It's important because whether or not Paul Pelosi opened the door and what happened in those moments will give us more details about the actual relationship between Paul Pelosi and his alleged attacker, which is important to the whole mainstream liberal media narrative of this guy is some Trump supporter that went on a rampage against Democrats. Right. That's the narrative for the mainstream liberal media. It is being used. The story is being used to smear half the country as potentially violent people who are out here trying to kill politicians and their family members. That's why it's important to know who opened the door and what happened. What is the nature of the relationship between this guy, David DePape, however you pronounce his name, and Paul Pelosi? It's very simple. And the strange part about this is that every single time there's a detail that comes out, a detail that's been confirmed by even local or mainstream liberal media uh, that goes against the mainstream liberal media narrative that this guy is a Trump supporter. It gets erased every single time. Like, you know, the detail that came out that the guy was in his underwear, he was either Pelosi or the guy, one of them was in their underwear. That came out. That came from a local news station that was mysteriously retracted. Well, why is that? It's because, well, if the guy was in his underwear, apparently... That indicates that something else was going on here, right? Something else crazy was going on here, right? No, no, no. Can't have that. That's fueling conspiracies. You also had the 911 call that seems like Paul Pelosi knew the guy, right? He called him his friend. Mainstream little media comes out and said, no, no, no. He was actually talking in code. He didn't actually know him. He didn't know his attacker. He was talking in code. <laughs> Again, ain't it amazing how, again, every detail that comes out that suggests that something else is going on here, it gets erased. 
But they keep telling us this guy was a MAGA guy. Where's the proof? Where's the evidence? Allegedly, he said all these things. Do we have proof that he said any of these things? Apparently, he put all these things, these conspiracies that are supposed to be right-wing conspiracies online. Have we seen any of that? Has any of that stuff come out? Nope. Magically, mysteriously, Big Tech erased it before anybody can see it. The only people that have seen it are left-wing news websites like the Washington Post, right? But they, they can't show us the receipts. The receipts they do show us are heavily redacted. They're heavily censored. So there is no evidence that this guy is some type of Trump supporter, right? There is no evidence. But they ran with that. They ran with that. They haven't retracted that part yet, right? That part hasn't been retracted. But again, you have a journalist who accidentally tells the truth, right, about another part of what happened with this interaction that suggests that, hey, you know, maybe this guy is not a Trump supporter. Maybe there's something else going on here. Like the fact that he allegedly opened the door. Paul Pelosi opened the door. Backed away, let the police in. Didn't indicate he was in any type of danger. NBC retracts that report ahead of the midterms. Huh, interesting. And then after the midterms, we learned that the reporter was suspended. But the local NBC News affiliate ran a story that is the exact same story that the national NBC reporter ran. And he was suspended. But this local news station ran a story that confirms that what he said was correct. So why did NBC actually suspend him for? Because his story has been corroborated by another NBC affiliate. What's going on here? Well, it's very simple. NBC is engaged in a cover-up. This guy was not supposed to leak the real details of the story because the DOJ is covering up what actually happened. They're not going to tell the real story because, again, they don't want anybody to think anything outside the fact this guy was a Trump supporter MAGA guy. Okay, they don't want any questions asked. But this guy reported details that contradicted that, a.k.a. the truth, the conspiracies, right? That goes along with the conspiracies. And he had to be punished again, not because it was untrue, but because. He put it out there a little bit too early, right? He put it out there before the midterms, because what other reason would. They allowed this a report from the local affiliate to run. The only difference is that it's after the midterms. That's the only difference. Or maybe this NBC outlet, this local outlet, uh, is rogue. Okay, maybe NBC is so bureaucratic and so big that they have not even seen this report from their local NBC uh, station. I'm just saying, there's a lot of different things to be going on here. There could also be some conflict and in, in some drama going on between local law enforcement and national law enforcement that could also be what's going on here but i know one thing it was politically motivated just not in the way that they're telling you right but definitely politically motivated because otherwise you wouldn't see this type of covering up this type of lying lack of transparency for something that should be very simple and these law enforcement officials should show us the body cam footage they want to Read the conspiracies. They want to stop the conspiracies. Okay, show us the body cam. Show us the security footage. Release the whole 911 call. Oh, no, we can't do that. Why not? Don't you want to stop the conspiracies? Apparently not. Because the conspiracies are true. The conspiracies are true. What we're being told about what happened is not what happened. And now that the midterms are done, the whole point of politicizing what happened, what allegedly happened with Paul Pelosi, the mission's been accomplished. Now it's time to not talk about it anymore. Now you can actually start to tell the truth why nobody's paying attention, right? It's not a big deal to tell the truth anymore. Nobody's paying attention. People forgot about this story. Again, it's absolutely incredible how this stuff works, bro. And this is why I'm following this story. I'm not going to stop following it because I want to follow it to the end. I want to see, I want to see proof that this guy was a MAGA guy. And when it comes out that he was not a MAGA guy, there was no proof that he wasn't a MAGA guy, it will be another reason to not believe the mainstream liberal media when it comes to these type of things. It'll be another example of them just blatantly lying to the people, using it for what it is in the moment, and then moving on and expecting you just to forget about it. You're not going to follow it to its conclusion to learn that you were lied to. Absolutely incredible stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.